Hello, I'm Dr. Peter Selby, Chief of the Addictions Division, CAMH. Welcome to the Clinical Practice Tips. In this series, we will focus on effective tapering strategies for prescription opioids. And in this video, we will focus on the opioid tapering protocol. The following video is intended for family physicians and other healthcare practitioners who are managing patients taking opioids for chronic non-cancer pain. So let's take a look at this protocol a little bit more closely. When you want to initiate a taper with a patient, the most important thing is not to abandon the patient, even if they have developed an addiction. Before you initiate the taper, it is important to establish the goals. Communicate clearly that the idea is to reduce pain intensity, although there might be some pain initially. The idea is to improve the person's mood. And most importantly, the idea is to improve day-to-day -day functioning. It is important to manage the expectations of the patient as to what can be accomplished. And it is often best to frame this as a trial taper with a clear exit strategy as to what will be done if the taper does not work. Remember that tapering is never a nice linear process. It can be quite a rocky road on which the patient and you will travel on to reach that ultimate goal of discontinuation of the opioid. It is important to have a detailed treatment agreement, what you can offer the person, and more importantly, what they can bring to the table and what they are willing to do to ensure the success of the taper. It is important to provide frequent follow-up visits and supportive counseling. What is the first step? If this person is not addicted to morphine and they're using another opioid, whether it's oxycodone or fentanyl, consider switching the patient to morphine, especially if the patient is dependent on oxycodone or hydromorphone. The next step is to calculate what the equivalent dose of morphine is. Start the patient on 50 to 60 percent of this dose and the reason we say this is that the cross tolerance between opioids is not complete. So it's better to start at a 50 to 60 percent replacement than to go at 100 percent replacement. Thereafter adjust the dose up or down as necessary to relieve withdrawal symptoms without inducing sedation. So in essence, you're doing a switch over to the opioid, and in this case, it's a switching over to morphine. The oral opioid analgesic conversion table is used because we want to have a consistent way in which practitioners make this calculation. When you're doing a conversion between fentanyl and morphine, it is a little bit more tricky because as you know, the fentanyl is prescribed as a patch that is used every three days. So therefore, the conversions to daily dosing of morphine is a bit more complicated and this table helps you make that calculation in a way that makes it safe for the transfer of somebody from fentanyl to morphine. As part of the new guidelines, Dr. Andrea Furlon has developed an enabler for your practice, and this is known as the opioid manager. And as part of the opioid manager, there is a worksheet that you can use to help you do that calculation so that you can safely switch somebody's opioid. For example, let's walk through this calculation. A patient is taking oxycodone 40 milligrams three times a day. This works out to a total dose of 120 milligrams a day. To calculate the morphine equivalent dose, 
look up the table, the conversion factor is 1.5, and this becomes 180 milligrams of morphine equivalent uh, doses a day. Within moderate range, therefore, the starting dose is 60%. And therefore, you give 108 milligrams of morphine per day, but in divided doses. In deciding how you will prescribe that morphine, it is ideal to use controlled release morphine if feasible. More importantly, prescribe scheduled doses based on time and not in response to the appearance of pain. Also prescribe at frequent dispensing intervals, daily, alternate days, weekly, depending on the patient's degree of control over their opioid use. More importantly, be clear with the patient that there will be no refills should the patient lose the prescription or run out early. More importantly is try to keep the same daily schedule for the patient. So for example, if they were taking their prescription three times a day, then keep it for three times a day as long as is possible before you go to a twice a day schedule of the controlled release morphine. How quickly should you taper? Generally, the rate of taper can vary from a, approximately 10% of the total daily dose per day to 10% of the total daily dose every one to two weeks. This is a negotiated rate of taper, taking into consideration patient factors, such as their readiness, such as what else is going on in their lives, as well as the feasibility of other healthcare providers to assist you in this taper. Slower tapers are indicated for people who are anxious about the taper, are psychologically dependent on opioids, or have comorbid cardiorespiratory conditions or have simply expressed a preference to a slow, for a slow taper. Once you have reached one third of the original dose that they started with, start slowing down the rate of taper to about half the previous rate. This is because as the dose goes lower, people become more sensitive to any dose reductions. Hold the dose when appropriate. Sometimes you have to hold the dose or even increase the dose if the patient experiences severe withdrawal symptoms, a significant worsening of pain or mood, or reduced function during the taper. It is important to monitor the patient while they are being tapered. Now this can happen by the prescriber or by the dispenser as long as there's good communication between both the prescriber and the dispenser of this medication. Therefore, schedule frequent visits during the taper. At each visit, explore the pain status, ask about withdrawal symptoms, and of course, any noted benefits from the taper, such as reduced pain, improved mood, improved energy level, and levels of alertness. Use a urine drug screening protocol to assess adherence or cooperation with the plan. For example, if you notice you've been tapering somebody using morphine, but their urine toxicology screen still shows marijuana or shows other opioids, then you have an indication that the taper is not going as planned and therefore you have to reassess as to whether a taper is indicated or you need to step it up to detoxification or withdrawal in a withdrawal center or even substitution with an agonist treatment. Another way to know whether the person has control over their medication is to prescribe 10 days worth of medication and see the patient again within seven days. At that point, ask them to bring back the unused medications and do a pill count. Very quickly you will know whether this person is able or is following the prescribed regimen for their taper. When you do this, make sure that at any given point in time, 
you do not allow the patient to amass more than three days worth of medication per prescription. I suggest that you tailor according to the patient's stability. It is important to involve the patient in the tracking of the taper. This boosts their feeling of empowerment and also to get an accurate picture of the setbacks they might experience while undergoing the taper. As part of a good therapeutic relationship, it is important to communicate to the patient that they can let you know when the taper is not going well. What you don't want them to do is hide it from you and only for you to discover it at a later date. Involve the patient in tracking the taper to boost feelings of empowerment and to get an accurate picture of the setbacks they might experience. Finally, completing the taper. Tapers can usually be completed between two to three weeks or as long as three to four months. Even in patients who are unable to complete the taper, it might be feasible to maintain them at a lower dose if you've got observed improvements in their mood or levels of functioning and they've been following the treatment agreement. This slide just demonstrates the opioid manager as an overall way to manage chronic non-cancer pain. Within this opioid manager, you will find a quick guide on how to stop the essentials. And in essence, this summarizes what we talked about today. This opioid manager is available on the National Pain Center website and is also available for EMR platforms. They have also developed apps for Android and Apple products.